Hello again, and welcome to another video. Um, this one's going to be trying to get super short. I just was doing my reading for my class and felt really impressed that I needed to, again, talk about why these videos are so important and why I'm talking about this topic. And to specifically um, kind of introduce the topic of real domestic violence that happens in toxic relationships um, and just how prevalent this problem is and why I want not only you, but those around you and anybody who's watching this video to be aware and watching for the signs that somebody is being abused or is in a toxic relationship because they need help and they need support. Let's go to the, the reading from my, from my class. Let's pull that up here and share my screen. So this is chapter 24 of the book that I have been using that I've mentioned several times, Successful Marriages and Families, Proclamation Principles and Research Perspectives. So the first part of this chapter talks about um, child abuse and its dangers um, and also the associated consequences um, for the different types of abuse, physical, mental, emotional, sexual, um, But this next section that I just started reading, and I, I, just a little bit into it, I already see how much I want to talk about, you know, why this is a problem, is talks about intimate partner violence, which is kind of more the focus of my videos on um, toxic relationships. So intimate partner violence is a public health problem, a human rights issue, and a clinical challenge, as it says here in the book. Um, so that means it's not just a religious issue. You know, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we've been talking about family proclamation principle associated with in, um, toxic relationships. Um, so this isn't just a religious issue. It's a health issue, a human rights issue, um, and clinical. And let's look at um, this um, sample here where it talks about, you know, the rates of domestic violence. Um, they're difficult to assess because you know this goes unreported by the victims, definitely by the perpetrators, and oftentimes to um, what should be to their shame by the people who are close to them. Um, so approximately one in every four women will experience physical violence by an intimate partner at least once in their life. Almost one third of female homicide victims reported in police records are killed by an intimate partner. About 1.3 million women are raped or physically assaulted or both by their intimate partners every year. My friend Amy has been in that situation. Intimate partner violence results in more than 18.5 million mental health care visits each year. Now, although these numbers are specific to the United States, a recent worldwide study confirms that this problem is indeed global. Uh, now, I talked about World Health Organization researchers that that went out through the world and found that this is common throughout all the world. Um, we're going to go to the next page and talk about you know their their methods and what they found. So, and I want to point out that while women are typically the victims of intimate partner violence, and often studies that study this are um, focused on the women aspect because they are more often the victims. That does not mean that men are not victimized and that there aren't women perpetrators. Um, and it may not be as common, but it is out there. So in this study, women were randomly, so they, they went to you know 15 different sites in 10 countries and interviewed more than 2,400 women uh, between 15 and 49. And they were randomly selected and care was taken to keep the interviews completely private. Um, and they did this um, in ways such as setting up a fake interview for the, for the man while the woman participated. Um, and many of these women had never spoken about this with anyone else, um, which shows just how much fear um, this violence creates. And that's part of why it goes unreported. And even though different, you know, many different cultures and languages uh, were part of this study, violence is worldwide. This is everywhere. Um, so no matter who you are or where you're at, this is why these videos are important. This is why it's important to understand the family proclamation to the world and understand the warnings given by the apostles and prophets. 
which says, um, we warn that individuals who abuse spouse or offspring and who violate covenants of chastity will one day stand accountable before God. We further warn that the disintegration of the family will bring upon individuals, communities, and nations the calamities foretold by ancient and modern prophets. And it talks about calamities upon individuals. And that's not just the, the perpetrator being punished, but their victims suffer mental, physical, and emotional, and spiritual um, consequences that can be severe and long-lasting, um, which is why we need to be able to support others to reach out and not be afraid of a violent individual and their toxicity. Um, if you're a victim, don't be afraid to go and get help. Getting help to end that cycle is your only way out. Um, sure, you could run and escape that person, um, but that may lead to them trying to find you and you being alone when that happens. Or you may end up in a, just another situation with another toxic person because you haven't learned the skills and abilities and gotten the help to heal and be able to seek a healthy relationship, which is why I encourage you to study the family proclamation and the responsibilities of men and women taught therein and your eternal nature. Go and watch the video that I made about your divine worth. Um, but we as um, onlookers seeing this happen, we shouldn't be afraid to report it to the police and to get that person help. Even though they may say they don't want help and that they, you know, they feel like they can handle it on their own, the truth is they most likely cannot. And if nothing is done, tragedy may happen. Think about those statistics that we just read. How many women have been killed or raped or assaulted? 1.3 million every year just in the United States alone. Um, and it talked about one third of female homicide victims reported are killed by an intimate partner. One third. That means if there were a hundred murders where you live in whatever town you live in, 33 of those murders, murdered women, it happened by their domestic partner, the person that they're living with or that they are romantically involved with. So we need to be advocates for them and get them help and extend help to them. They may not accept the help. You may call the police and have the police intervene and have them try to help them and they may not leave. That's their choice, but it's on you to do and say something because enough of those little experiences, enough of people reaching out and let it, and calling the police or letting them know, pointing out the um, significant other's bad behavior, whether it's a guy or a girl that's the victim or the perpetrator, the more that happens, the more that person can come to recognize the situation they're in and begin to take action. Um, but it's on us to do something about it. Toxic relationships cannot be allowed to continue to be permitted in our societies. We have to end that if we want to have the love and connection that needs to be on the earth when the Savior comes so that we can be prepared to live with him. Um, and getting help for the victim doesn't mean that we aren't also wanting to help the perpetrator. Often, those who perpetuate abuse may have been abused themselves and need therapy and counseling to heal the hurt in them to change their behaviors. We shouldn't write them off as an evil or unsavable individual um, unless every effort has been made to help them change and they've chosen not to change. So I hope you understand why this is so important, why these videos, I continue to make them for my class and why I may continue to make videos on this topic in the future. Um, who knows, I'm a busy young dad um, as to whether or not I'll continue to do this. Now, I hope you can hear me um, in these videos. I hope the volume is good. I've watched a couple of my videos now and seen that perhaps I need to talk a little bit louder, but I have sleeping children. Um, 
So stay tuned for more videos about what you can do. Um, I don't know where in the series of videos I will put this um, as to how I would number it as to video essays because it was kind of a random, I felt prompted to make this. And I hope that it helps you. Um, may the Lord be with you. And may you have courage to help end this cycle and save individuals and families who are struggling in toxic relationships.